This is Spruce and Studs and welcome on into this painting tutorial. And I will tell you first and straight off the bat that this tutorial is not going to net you a gold demon. That's just how it is. What this tutorial is actually for is to basically first get your miniatures on the tabletop very quickly or relatively quickly. I am myself a very slow painter. It takes me about two to three hours to actually paint one grunt trooper. And the second thing is to allow me to show you exactly what details that you need to pick out to let your miniature pop without needing to paint every single one of those little ropes or medallions that dangle off of your model. And then thirdly, hopefully, when you are beating your opponent on the tabletop, not only will your opponent say GG to you, they will tell you that, wow, you did a damn good job of painting your miniatures. So without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. All right, and we are locked and loaded. In front of you are the paints that you will need. The ones that are cut off on the top are Agrellin Earth and Agrax Earthshade. And in subsequent videos, I will make sure to put that in a list form for your reading ease. So as the red X is a very prominent thing for the death company, you want to make sure to point that out, which is to paint it. And then the next thing that you'll need to do is to highlight all the skulls as well as the purity seal metals with retributor armor. And that helps also the model to pop out from its monochrome blackness because obviously with death company, it's just completely black. And to also break up the monotony, you also will be needing to paint the jump pack engine with lead belcher because if you're looking at the model from the back all you see is a big gigantic black blob and this helps breaks up the monotony again so with the Phoenician purple you're going to want to paint the purity seal ribbons and the reason why I chose to paint this area is because again it breaks up the monotony as you see the purity seal as well as the ribbons are literally in the middle of the jet pack and what you want to do is break up the monotony of the black so when you put something like that in the middle it helps the model pop out a lot more than it usually would. So the next thing you'll do is to use Ulthuin Gray to paint the wings. Now this is actually a very rare instance where I use pure white on any kind of model. So with the Ulthuin Gray, you can actually get away with using that to mimic the white because looking at this particular model, it literally looks like that gray part is white. And the main reason why I do that is because I find that the Citadel paints, especially the pure white stuff, it doesn't cover really well. So the Ulthuin gray color makes up for that deficiency. So the next thing we're going to do is use Apothecary White to shade the wings. And I use this contrast medium very, very extensively, especially when I'm painting the wings of the Sanguinary Guard. Thank God we don't have to paint and shade every single one of those blades and feathers on the wings. So this is a nice way to just save time and frustration because you're going to be painting a lot of these elite troopers over here. So the next thing that we want to do is something I do a lot is to use the contrast medium blood angels red to paint over the lenses as well as the blood drops and i really like using this technique because it allows the blood drop to actually look metallic for some people you may actually want the silver tones to pop out more than the red color so what i would recommend doing is maybe doing a one-to-one -one ratio with the contrast the technical medium that you can also find from citadel paints so the next thing you want to do is to basically highlight all the parts of the model that you have shaded. So in that one that you saw, we painted the purity seals with auric armor. And for this, the purity seal ribbons with gene stealer purple. So again, it makes the model pop. And this is probably the most important part is highlighting the power armor because right now it still looks a little bit like a black blob and this highlight makes a huge difference in making your model pop out on the tabletop and i have painted models before without highlighting and it just looks very bland and very monotonous and this gives it plenty of character that you'll definitely need so i paint the base with rhinox hide and you just need to make sure that whatever base that paint that you're going to be using you're going to be using consistently across the rest of your army i also like using the 
Citadel texture paints to make the base pop out with a little bit more character, but I really don't have time to wait for it to dry because it takes about half an hour to 45 minutes, even more depending on how thick you slop the paint on. So what I actually do is put that model in front of a space heater, probably about four to five inches away, and obviously I babysit that thing. And that space heater will dry up that base very, very quickly so that you can jump right into shading it. And it probably takes a less than like five minutes in front of a space heater to really make it dry up. So in the next few segments, we're actually painting out all the details that are on the arms, as well as the armaments that the Death Company Trooper is using. And again, this is very important because you don't want your model to look completely black. As I have said before, I'm picking bits and pieces on the model to make it pop and have some sort of differentiation because you need that differentiation, especially on a black model. And the process that you're seeing me doing is literally a repeat of what we have been doing for the Space Marine body, picking out all the points to paint with Phoenician purple as well as the purity seals with Retributor armor. And now we are going to be shading the base with Agrax Earthshade. And finally, we're going to be using a dry brush to bring out all the raised points on that base. It is very important to make sure that when you are dry brushing, you dip your dry brush into the paint pot and basically remove almost like 95% of the paint that's on the brush. And you're going to then gently brush this back and forth. And finally, to give more character to your model, you're going to be putting PVA glue on the base of your model and then putting grass on top of the areas in which you put PVA glue. And there you go there's the finished model for you. As you can see, I did not pick out all the details that are on the Space Marines armor, especially on top where the blood tears are with the jump pack. I really did not need to do anything there because the monotony gets broken up by the purity seals. So this is Spruce and Studs, and I really hope that you enjoyed this painting tutorial. Please make sure to leave a comment in the comment section if you want to see some other techniques or tips I use to get these Space Marines where they are. And as usual, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.